Welcome to Politics Now. We're talking today about a very special event that's going to be uh, coming up on Sunday. It is the first in the West event uh, put on by the Nevada Democratic Party. And uh, we're here welcoming the uh, chairman of the Nevada Democratic Party, William McCurdy II, also Assemblyman uh, McCurdy. So uh, welcome back to Politics Now. Thank you for having me again. I'm glad to be on. So, uh, so this is ex an exciting event. We we're talking just before uh, air about uh, there's 13 of the candidates, uh, including I think all the major candidates are coming. Right, Joe Biden, Elizabeth Warren, uh, uh, um, uh, Bernie Sanders, all the uh, all the uh, people that uh, we're getting very used to seeing around town. Absolutely, uh, this is our big, our really big event, and we're excited. You, what you're going to expect is a lot of high energy. You're going to see a lot of folks, you know, making their case to Nevadans directly about why they should be the nominee who to who was going to take on Donald Trump in the general. So we're really excited about it, 13 candidates. Uh, we're expecting a lot of fiery speeches and <laughs> we're looking forward to hearing them. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. This, 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 what do you think this event says about Nevada that you, uh, that we get uh, all these candidates? Obviously, we're early in the primary process. There's some people that say Nevada gets neglected or overlooked. Um, I look at events like this, like the AFSME event, the AFL-CIO mm -hmm. event, the SEIU event, and I say, I don't think we're being overlooked. I think we're getting more than our fair share of visits. Well, you know what? It's an exciting time for our state, you know, us being, you know, first in the West, third in the nation. Uh, Nevada is important for a lot of different reasons. Number one, because our growing diversity, um, you know, our growing um, and uh, union membership. We have about 14% uh, union density here in the state of Nevada, mm. which is, you know, the highest in the country. Uh, yeah. So candidates are taking Nevada seriously. They're coming out here. They're making their voice heard. They're pleading their case. And uh, we're, we're better for it. As the, as the chairman of the party, you don't feel that Nevada has been neglected or overlooked in any way by any of the candidates? No, no, and I actually would think that it would be a mistake for any candidate to take Nevada uh, for granted, uh, number one, because of our diversity yeah. and because of the diverse, diversity of our issues as well. Um, we have the highest AAPI population uh, in the country and growing. Hmm. Uh, nearly one out of four folks uh, who work in Nevada are Spanish speakers. Um, and again, going back to our union density, and we have a you know growing African American community as well. So Nevada is a microcosm of what the entire country looks like, and we're you know we're excited to you know number one display our diversity and also uh, have candidates come in and talk about why they should be the next president. Now this is this is kind of a self-serving question, I guess, but uh, a lot of people have said, uh, look, Iowa, New Hampshire are nowhere near as diverse as Nevada. They're both uh, sort of Midwest, East. Uh, we, uh, the dinner uh, title says it all, we are the first in the West. Do you think Nevada ought to be moved up higher? It, it, it represents uh, more of what America looks like. Do you think we should get a higher spot in the calendar? You know what, right now we're enjoying the, the, you know, the opportunity that we have to be you know, the first in the West and third in the nation. And because of, diver of our diversity, we should definitely take a look at you know, um, maybe moving up and you know, having our voice heard a lot sooner. Uh, but for now, you know, we are first in the West, we are battle born, and we're looking forward to having all 13 candidates here in the state of Nevada on Sunday to present their case to Nevadans. And, you know, and, and I know there are some candidates who are probably thinking you know, in their calculus, you know, I may not do as well in Iowa, and I may not do as well in New Hampshire, but Nevada will be a backstop. Nevada will show that I can run in uh, uh, places that have diversity, that I can appeal to mm -hmm. people who are union members, mm -hmm. that I can appeal to uh, people in minority groups that aren't as well represented in those first two states. And so it, it really is an important uh, a spot on the calendar uh, for candidates who may say, you know, I may not do well in those first two states, but if I can hang on to Nevada and do well there, mm -hmm. I can really get some momentum going into South Carolina and Super Tuesday. Absolutely. And, you know, Everyone is looking to what Nevada is going to do. Historically, Nevada has been the state to select the nominee to go on to be the president. And that's a Im very important uh, role to play in the nominating process. So yes, candidates, you know, they're taking a hard look at, you know, what is Nevada gonna say? Because more than likely, what Nevada says goes. So um, we're looking forward to having our voice heard uh, at the upcoming caucus. You know, as you know, we've done a lot of work to expand the opportunity for folks to participate in our caucus, beginning with the early vote starting February 15th through the 18th, four days of in-person early vote, which is completely amazing, uh, in addition to having our, our, our um, 
cards offer in multilingual, we have Spanish, Tagalog, and also English. So we are very um, excited for this opportunity to have our voice heard. Uh, and we're really happy for all the candidates that are you know, coming out because if they don't, they can't go forward. Yeah, it, 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 as you said, it would be a mistake to, to skip Nevada. So, so uh, the, the, the First in the West event, um, uh, how did that come about? Uh, what, what, what's the idea behind it, and, and how uh, will you measure success? How will, how, you, how will you say, you know what, we really had a successful event here? Well, we are, we're already successful because we have 13 candidates that are confirmed to be here, and that lets us know that they are actually taking Nevada seriously. Um, Next, we'll be able to look at, um, you know, actually you say why have the First in the West event? Because we're highlighting our First in the West status, we're highlighting our diversity, we're highlighting the opportunity for the candidates to come and directly present their case to Nevada voters. And we're expecting, um, you know, a strong turnout and we're also expecting uh, some great speeches from our phenomenal dem Democratic candidates. Uh, you know, polls show uh, Joe Biden doing very well. Mm -hmm. uh, Bernie Sanders has also done very well here. Elizabeth Warren I I is creeping up. What's your sense of the race? Is it, is it anything goes? I mean, anybody can win uh, at this point, or, or do you see there's front runners, you know, uh, 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 leading the pack? Nevada's wide open. Mm -hmm. For a lot of different reasons. So anybody can win. Anybody can win Nevada, okay. uh, but the the candidate that comes early and comes often uh, will do better than others who don't, and that's just the reality of it. You know, if you're present, you're going to win. Uh, if you're 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 taking our state seriously, you're having a statewide strategy, not only in Southern Nevada but also in Washoe County and across the state. You're going to do very well and we're uh, really looking forward to seeing you know how our voters will respond to the candidates who've been present here and um, again this is a phenomenal very phenomenal opportunity for us and, and certainly the party has, has not neglected any part of the state you've got early voting sites throughout the entire state of Nevada yes. in every county yes uh, so and anybody uh, they don't have to travel very far if they want to make their voice heard in the caucus uh, uh, they don't even have to wait for caucus day. They can go early and, and do that. Yes. Uh, and the, how, how, how is that going, all the early voting sites? Is, is that all prepared? You're, you're ready to go for that? Yes. Uh, we're, we're so far, we've done over 150 trainings across the mm. state. Uh, we've recruited over 13, well, 1,400 volunteers. And right now, we've talked to over uh, 24,000 Nevadans uh, about the upcoming caucus and, and, our, and their role in it. Uh, so we're doing the work each and every day, the dogged work that you know folks may take for granted, but not here within the Nevada State Democratic Party. Uh, we are doing the work day in and day out, and we have a phenomenal executive director in Alana Mounts and a phenomenal uh, team and communications team with Molly Forge. So uh, we are very excited about this opportunity uh, mm -hmm. to expand the caucus to be the most transparent and accessible yet. Um, we have really thought it out really well. You're, um, uh, as chairman of the party, you know, you're overseeing the whole thing. You, you probably, you don't want to take sides. You don't want to, you know, declare your support for any, any particular candidate. Uh, but you're going to caucus, right? So you're going to caucus for a particular candidate. Do you have a favorite so far in the race? Um, I am um, going to reserve okay. uh, who I'm going to support. <laughs> so we got to uh, wait till February 22nd to find you out. You have to wait. Okay. And um, it's important for a lot of different reasons. Um, you know, number one of the number one concerns was making sure that you know the party is neutral and transparent yeah. and accessible and we are creating a process that is expansive and as our leader it is important for me to maintain neutrality uh, so that means uh, I'm not supporting any candidate have it you know contributed to any candidate mm -hmm. and I am going to make sure that um, I maintain neutrality for the sake of the party yeah. and um, we will get it done in nominating the candidate that's going to go on to take uh, take it to Donald Trump and in the general. Is it is it hard to stay to stay neutral? Because I, I you know I know you follow these things closely than most people. Uh, you probably have somebody and 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 somebody who you think will be the best person to take on President Trump in uh, in November 2020. Is it hard to stay uh, sort of out of the fray at least until Caucus Day comes around? Well, for it's not about me. Mm -hmm. uh, this is about Nevadans and what Nevadans want. Um, I am one voice out of many, and I believe what we'll see is Nevada, Nevadans make their voice heard loud and clear uh, come uh, caucus day, and we're going to nominate the candidate that's going to go on and be Donald Trump, and that's what this is all about. It's not about one person. Um, I'm honored to be our leader, uh, but this is about all Nevada Democrats. And, and it's important for, uh, for uh, uh, Nevada to get this right, uh, right? Not to maintain that early position. Uh, uh, normally a state of uh, three, uh, three and a half million people with six electoral votes, 
probably wouldn't get a lot of presidential attention, but because of our place in the calendar, we get all sorts of presidential attention. We want to keep that, and so it's important to, to, to get the caucus right, to do it right, to show the party we know what we're doing here and, and build on past successes. Yes, we're building on past successes, uh, and we have this opportunity because of former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. Uh, he has, you know, been a phenomenal advocate for the Nevada State Democratic Party. He uh, created the framework for who we are, and we're forever grateful for his service, uh, not only uh, within the party but in our state. Yeah, absolutely. We should name the caucus probably for him. <laughs> um, right now, there's uh, there's almost 600,000. It's 594,439 Democrats. I looked it up. Uh, today, do you expect that number to increase as people get interested in the caucus and go out and register as Democrats so they can participate in the caucus? You know what? We're going to continue to register Democrats up and uh, up up and down the state. Uh, we're not going to leave any stone unturned. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when we register voters, when we communicate with them, educate them, turn them out, we win, and we're going to continue to do just that. And yes, we will continue to expand our registration advantage because it is uh, very serious that we do that. It's very, about very important. Uh, yeah, it's about seventy-seven thousand. Last time I checked, more Democrats than Republicans in in uh, Nevada. Uh, great story about Harry Reid. He was once asked, you know, how many people we have on election day. Uh, and uh, uh, or how many people he have registered by the time the caucus comes around and uh, uh, to the chagrin of his staff he said we're gonna have a hundred thousand we'll have an advantage of a hundred thousand and uh, as it turns out it was actually hundred and twenty he lowballed it um, are you willing to go out and make any predictions how many people you think are gonna get registered through this caucus process you know what that's why he is who he is <laughs> he is amazing and I won't be that bold to, to give a number but what I will say is that we have the best team on the ground doing the work day in and day out from sun up to sun down, registering voters, talking to uh, vol volunteers, recruiting volunteers, and we will be prepared uh, to win uh, starting with our caucus and going on to the general to continue to uh, win seats up and down the ballot. Yeah, because this caucus and, and, and the event on, on Sunday really plays into that. Uh, by bringing attention to it. This caucus really is a tool that the Democratic Party has used historically to uh, register voters, get those mailing lists and, and voter lists uh, up, and then also to, uh, to get the GOTV going and turn out people on, a, yes. on not only caucus day, but also primary election day and then a general election day in November. Uh, and, and it apparently has been quite successful not only with Senator Reid, but also President Obama uh, in this state. And we will continue to duplicate uh, those, those different avenues to create success. Um, in many ways, this is a, a dress rehearsal, so to speak, mm -hmm. to prepare us uh, for the battle that's, you know, that's waiting in the general. Uh, and it starts uh, with caucus. It starts with um, you know, mobilizing our voters. It starts with making sure that they are ready to be site leads and, and so on uh, into, into the general. So uh, we will continue to duplicate what we've done in the past and we will build upon the successes of the past as well. Yeah. Last question on, on, the, on the caucus. We're going to see a, a, a multiplicity of candidates there. I imagine there's going to be people there supporting all the, all the individual candidates. It's always disappointing when the candidate you wanted to win doesn't win. Uh, if you're a supporter, uh, you know, we saw this in the last time, supporters of Bernie Sanders were disappointed when Hillary Clinton won not only Nevada, but also won the nomination. Um, this time there's a lot more candidates. Um, there's going to be a lot of uh, people who are going to be disappointed as their candidates drop out. Some already have uh, dropped out, and so they're going to be disappointed. Do you think, you said earlier that the, the, the main goal is to beat President Trump. Do you think people are going to come together, even if their person didn't win, the person that they were backing didn't win, come together and uh, around whoever the eventual nominee is? Absolutely. Uh, because we cannot afford not to come together. Uh, we know uh, as a party that even though we have differences and even, if, even, even though we may support different candidates, at the end of the day, we have to come together, remain united, have a united front if we're going to win in the general. And I believe that Nevada voters and voters across the country understand that. And we will not take it for granted. Uh, this is not about one individual candidate. This is about us coming together to fight for our values, to fight for our children, to fight for our grandchildren, to fight for the opportunity at everyone to have a better quality of life into the future. Uh, the Nevada State Democratic Party is a party of opportunity, equality, equality, and a better life for all of us. And we will come together united to 
win the general. Sounds good. Well, let me ask you one question in your role as a state lawmaker. You're currently in, in, in the state assembly, uh, the, and uh, there is a proposal now uh, that's uh, being put forth by the League of Women Voters that would essentially take the process of redistricting out of the hands of the legislature and put it in the hands of an independent commission. Now, this is just a proposal. It's being circulated now. It's not uh, on the ballot yet. Uh, but if it, it gets on the ballot, it could amend the Constitution and change the way redistricting has been done uh, in the state. Now, it looks like, and, and based on what you're saying earlier, if the Nevada Democratic Party does as well as you're saying, it looks like the Nevada legislature will remain in Democratic hands. The governor's mansion already is in Democratic hands. And so Democrats will get to draw these lines in 2021. If this initiative gets on the ballot and becomes effective in 2023, the lines would be redrawn. What do you think of that initiative? Is it a good idea or a bad idea? Should we go for it or not? Um, it's an idea. Mm -hmm. And I want to credit the League of Women Voters for all the work that they've been doing uh, over, the, over the years to make sure that they lift up the voices of folks who um, or may not have an opportunity to be heard. Um, but we have an opportunity to continue to secure and maintain our majorities in the legislature and under democratic control. I believe that we should wait to you know, consider any proposal of such and, until we figure out uh, what the makeup is going to look like. But as you know, we can't wait, and they can't wait, so they're going to start their process. Uh, but I believe that the legislature under democratic control will be the best vehicle to draw the lines. It seems kind of frustrating, too. The Supreme Court just got done handing down a ruling and said, partisan gerrymandering, it's really a political issue for the, uh, the political branch to decide and the Democrats are going to be in charge, but now comes along a proposal that says, no, we're going to take it out of your hands after all this time and put it in the hands of a commission. And who knows how the lines will look after that. And we waited a very long time uh, to have secured all three branches, uh, yeah. so to speak, yeah. uh, of, of Democratic control. And I believe that we have a phenomenal leader in Governor Sisolak. We have very capable leaders of both houses in Speaker Jason Frierson and Senate Majority Leader Nicole Cannizzaro. And I trust them and their vision and their, 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 their vision for the future of this state uh, with that process. And um, I'm honored to have served with all of them. Sounds great. Well, William McCurdy, the second, thanks so much uh, for, uh, for being on here. Good luck with the event on, uh, on Sunday night. And uh, we'll hope to have you back soon. Thank you so much. We're looking forward to a great event.